this is Brittany from Hand to Mind. This is our first grade teach at home math video series. This is week three, day three. So the other day I was making some bracelets with some beads and I noticed that I didn't have very many beads left. So I went to the store and I bought 10 more beads. Again, not sure what I how many I had, but I knew I just bought 10. And when I got home, I figured out that I had 20 beads all together. Is there a way I could have figured out how many I, before I went to the store, how many beads I had? Hmm, is there a way if I knew how many I bought at the store and what I ended up with, could I figure out how many I started with? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today, is we're gonna talk about problems where you don't know how much you start with but you know how much you get and you know how much you end with. So come join me today as we talk about join start unknown problems. So we're going to begin by looking at a situation that doesn't have any numbers. And so what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to listen to the story and picture in your head what's happening. So here I go. Close your eyes. Chris had some coins in his bank. Then he found some more in the cat couch. Hmm. Open your eyes. What did you have in mind? What did you see? Well, I saw somebody who had some coins in his bank. So do you have a bank at home? So maybe like a piggy bank or a jar that you might keep some change. And then I see him digging in the couch and finding some coins. My kids always do that. Find some coins, right? And so he found some more in the couch. That's what I see. So let's see what happens in the story. Chris had some coins in his bank. Then he found some more. He found six more in the couch. Well, we still don't know how many coins he had in his bank, but we do know now that he had six more. He found six more in the couch. Wow, so he found six coins. We don't know which coin the coins, but he found six coins. Okay, let's see how the story ends. Chris had some coins in his bank. Then he found six more in the couch. Now he has 10 coins. How did it change? Well, now we know how many he ends up with. So let's organize our information just like we would be telling a story, a story always has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Well, this problem has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So we're gonna organize our information on this chart. So it starts off by saying, Chris has some coins in his bank. That's the beginning. Do we know anything then? No, that's our question mark. What happens next? He found six more coins. So that's our middle, he found six coins. And then how did it end? Now he has 10 coins. So it ended with him having 10 coins. Hmm, so what question can we ask? Well, I think it has to be around this question mark right here, which is what? What is it about? It's about the sum coins in his bank. So the question is, how many coins did he start with, right? So how many were in that bank? So let's see. So we're gonna use a wreck and wreck to help us. If you have a wreck and wreck, you can use your wreck and wreck at home to do this. And so with a wreck and wreck, we're going to have our two rows. And the first thing we're gonna do is write that problem that we had. So we know that Chris had some in his bank he found six and now he has 10. So to solve this, I don't know how many he had, but I do know that he had six, right? And my job is to figure out what plus six equals 10. So six and what can make 10? Well, some of you may be saying, well, if you know a wreck and wreck has 10 on the top, you just have to bring these four over and now you've made 10. So six and four, six and four make 10. So now we have our answer. We know that something plus six equals 10 is 
four. Hmm. So let's practice again. Let's listen to the story. Grandpa had some tools in his garage. Then his son gave him six more for his birthday. Now Grandpa has 15. How many tools did Grandpa start with? So as a mathematician, we always want to understand our problem. So I always ask myself, who or what is this about? Did you say it was about Grandpa? And tools? Yeah, so it's about Grandpa and these tools. And what do we want to know about Grandpa and these tools? We want to know how many tools Grandpa started with. We want to know how much he started with. Well, let's organize our information. Let's read it again and let's read it again and think about what's the beginning of the story. Grandpa had some tools in his garage. Then his son gave him six more for his birthday. Now Grandpa has 15. How many tools did Grandpa start with? So how did this begin? Well, it began with Grandpa had some tools in the garage. Do we know how many tools he had? Nope, we just know he had some. Then what happened? His son gave him six more. That's the middle of the story. His son comes over, gives him six more, and it ends with him having 15 tools. So he gets six more tools, and he has 15 tools. Interesting, right? Okay, so can we write a number sentence to help us? Well, we know that he started with some, we don't know how many, but we know that when someone gives us something that that's getting more and that's joining, so that's represented with addition, that's the six, and then he ends up with 15. Huh, so something plus six equals 15. So I want you to try to figure that out. We're gonna use a rec and rec to help us with this. So put my two rows on there, okay. So what do we know? We know something plus six equals 15. So we don't know what he started with, but we do know that his son gave him six more. And what are we trying to get? 15. So how could we get 15 on the wreck and wreck? What could we do? Did you say you could move over these four right here? Yeah, that would give us how many now? 10, we need 15, so what could we do? Oh, we could bring over these five. So five and four is what? So these four and these five are what we're bringing over. Is that nine? Nine plus six equals 15? How do I know nine plus six equals 15? How many of you are like, well, because I see 10 on top and five on bottom? Yeah, that's a nice way of knowing that that's 15. Okay, so let's go back to our story. So now we know that Grandpa started with nine tools in his garage. And his, when his son gave him six, he ended up with 15. So we're gonna do something a little bit different this next time. And this is going to be using a spinner and we're gonna write our own story using the number sentence up in the corner. So the spinner is gonna tell us what our story is gonna be about. So here we go, I'm gonna spin. Tell me when to stop, boom. Oh, it's gonna be about cats. So if you like cats, you're gonna like this story. Okay, so here it is. The story's gonna begin with something because we don't know how much it is, but it's something of these what? Cats. So let's see. Um, I can just use I. I have some cats. Don't know how many because it doesn't tell us. But what can we do to help us join for more? So I have some cats 
And what happens in our story? Well, four more cats come to my house. So can you see those cats coming to my house? Yep. Now, how's it end? Now, I have 12 cats. So what's our question? Well, it's whatever this is. That's the amount I have some cats. So the question is, how many cats did I start with? How many cats did I start with? Can you figure out how many cats I started with? So take a moment and see if you can figure out how many cats I started with. Okay, so I had to think, well, if I have four, how am I gonna get 12? And I visualized my wreck and wreck and I know four and six is gonna give me 10. And I need two more. Ah, so there's my two more. On the bottom gives me 12. So six and two is eight. Eight plus four equals 12. I pictured that wreck and wreck in my head and I made 10 first and then I needed two more. That's a way that you can use your pictures in your mind to help you. So these stories that we've been talking about today have all been stories where, where the beginning has been missing. We've been missing the beginning. So we've been, we, we haven't known the start of the story. So if you'd like to practice more on these problems that you don't know the start, and you have to figure that out, go to handtomind.com where you can get some more activities that reinforce this idea. Hope you all have a great rest.